Welcome to episode 12 of Catch Up with Max and Jose, where we are talking medieval rapé. Check it out. So today we are back in the chair, and I've got myself a, I found a gin, it's called uh, Rose Gin, it is Rose Gin, from Glendalough, which is like one of my favorite places in the world, it's a place in Ireland, visited a couple years ago, it's the most beautiful spot, if you ever have a chance, go there, I didn't know that they made gin, so that's what I got. Sounds lovely. It's not just gin, by the way, I put soda in there too. Maybe I'll go one day. Maybe you'll go one day. Maybe I'll go. Maybe not. Without him. All right, so for episode 12, today we are discussing rapé. What is rapé? Rapé is... Or rapé. Um, rapé. The thing is, it has multiple spellings. Let's Some go with rapé. Some are more appropriate than others. Yeah, let's go with the first one then. R-A-P-E with a accent. Igu. Igu. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's basically fig and wine. And I think there's some currants in there or raisins maybe it was raisins they're kind of like mixed up and mashed into like a like a spread it's actually really really good it's just like a jam with like a dryer like a jam yeah, yeah yeah so um in this one you mentioned powder of pepper and other good powder oh ha- that's right have you come across that anymore since this all the one? time really yeah, yeah yeah a lot of medieval recipes call for good powders or and then there are like specific powders that aren't that specific like Powder deuce. What is powder deuce? That means sweet powder. <laughs> um, or powder, uh, powder four, strong powder. And mm. it's it's actually like a mixture of different spices. And they're not consistent throughout history. Or so it's just baker's Europe. choice? Kind of, yeah. Mm, interesting. And then sandalwood came back on this one. And I know we kind of touched sandalwood upon it. Sandalwood is back. Yeah. But food grade sandalwood. Food grade, don't use it for the makeup kind. <laughs> uh, one of the more interesting facts that came out of this one was that um, scholars thought that potentially the the Garden of Eden, instead of an apple, it was a fig. A fig. I mean, it's the Garden of Eden, so it's. it's but yes, <laughs> they, they think that in early versions of the story, that the, the, the fruit they were talking about was a fig. There are also some who say that it was persimmon. In fact, like nobody actually thinks that it was an apple that they were talking about because apples were not available in the area. Yeah. You need to do like an apple episode at some point. I know. Just because I have an apple Pokemon that I want you to use. (laughs) I think, honestly, I was thinking about this today. I need to start doing some more full episodes on specific ingredients, like the history of a specific ingredient. Yes. I just have so much. I know it's a little broader. But it's it's fun. But then it, it also gives me the option... Of like choosing multiple stories, different geographies, different countries. geographies, and a, and a recipe from like because I have a lot of recipes that I'm like ah, but this doesn't really have a story behind it or there's nothing interesting, you know. But doing just an ingredient, like the the one to, that I'm researching today, which yesterday I about had a breakdown because I just was not it's not coming. Can you say what it is or? Yeah, so I'm doing an episode on um, it's a duck recipe. From the mid, was my favorite, one of my favorite foods, um, from the mid 1700s, French, and it was served at the wedding of the Marquis de Lafayette, mm-hmm. um, because a friend of mine wrote a book about, which mentions the wedding. Um, she's amazing, Stephanie Trey. Um, but I was gonna do the episode on the Marquis, and I just, it just wasn't really clicking, because um, cool. there wasn't enough like food. Okay. Stuff and he's really interesting, but it was like it would have been like an hour long episode. He's so fascinating. He's like the Forrest Gump of history. We always complain that the videos are getting too long. And, I know. <laughs> well, and then everyone's like, "Yeah, sure, serve it up. Like, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll watch it's, it." It's a lot of work. Though. It's a lot of work. Um, and then when it gets to subtitles, yeah, poor subtitle guy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's you're like it's 19 minutes. And I'm like, that's okay. just too long. <laughs> Next week, I think it's like 15, 15 okay. or something like that. But, but. All of a sudden, so I was like really in the doldrums because um, it, it just wasn't clicking and I was like reading stuff over and over and I was like, this isn't, this isn't right. And then I found, um, I found something that the episode's going to be on and it's not Lafayette, but it still ties in. Anyway, the reason that I brought that up was because one of the options I had thought about doing was the history of duck as an ingredient. Mm. It's not a, going to end up being what it is, but. All right. Well, we'll find out in a few weeks. Yeah. 
All right. So in this episode, I'd like to make fun of you because you included a really terrible joke. Really brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Only a few people know, but people commented on it, and it was the Asia Minor and Asia Major, major jokes. A little musical humor there. <laughs> there is evidence of the Ficus carica, or common edible fig, being cultivated in northern Asia Minor. Well, that was weird. Every time I said Asia Minor, I played a minor chord. And then when I said Asia Major, which isn't actually a thing, I played, it's just Asia. I don't even know. I, major <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. All right. Well, people have noticed. It's no, the one, beginning of quarantine. No one asked I was, for it, you know, but, you know, it's out there. Break. <laughs> and then for this one, once you, you were done with um, the rapé, you put it on a puff pastry. You didn't make the puff pastry, did you? No, I had planned to, but I had run out of flour. Ah, uh, okay. Because we were still in quarantine. Find flour at that right. Time. All right. Is that still in the fridge? Did you throw it away? No, it's gone. It's gone? Okay. It's been a year. I don't know. <laughs> if you keep it in the it's, freezer. Uh, true. We've, well, <laughs> but you have to remember, we have had a new refrigerator since then. That's right, because everything broke down, because yes. everything got, you know, just so much wear and tear. Yeah. The dishwasher. Yeah, we've our gotten so many, fridge, get so many new appliances. The washer and dryer. Air conditioning. That's unit. right, the air conditioner. I forgot about that one. Yeah. That was the most expensive one. Well, I know. the dryer kind of matched it, I think. I matched it. No. No? No. Okay, well, let's not talk about it. No. It's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about our expenses. <laughs> Anyone who's bought a new air conditioning unit knows that it's more expensive than a dryer. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we had such a hard time with the dryer that I thought. Yes, the dryer was a saga. Okay. Anyway, people do not want to hear about our appliance work. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I would edit it out, but it's too much work. Um, any lost tidbits that came out of this episode? I love that James is just like sitting here. I hope he can be on camera. Uh, he might be a little bit off camera. I'm not yeah. sure. Sorry, buddy. It's totally It's not it. your time. Uh, anything that got left on the cutting room floor that you've learned since this episode? I don't remember. This is, this is a year ago. I I do know that if I had written this episode now, there would just be a lot more in it. And I would have really leaned into the um, Car Carthago de Lenda Est, Carthage Must Be Destroyed. Um which is something that Cato said when he, he had figs. Um, not, not Cato. Um, I don't remember his name now. Pliny? Uh, no, no. I'm just going to throw out Yeah, put, it, put, names. put a picture up here. <laughs> you can tell me um, after. <laughs> and, uh, no, maybe it was Cato. Uh, so he, like, brought figs to the Senate, and those figs were from Carthage, and they were still ripe. And he was like, if figs can get here in three days, so can the Carthaginians. And I would have like leaned into that and told more about that story. Oh. So it's just, it's not so much that something went onto the cutting room floor. It's just that I realized that I write very, very differently now. I, yeah, yeah. You, I, you, I, I, you I did to more, abbrevi more of a deep time. abbreviated stories yeah. in the earlier days. Because you know what? We weren't sure. Was it because you weren't sure that people would even care? At that I, point? I, so I didn't think people would care about the history. Turns out that's the part that they care most about. As it should be. Yes. Because um, that's my favorite part. But I also wanted the episodes to be like six or seven minutes long. Yeah. Not anymore. All right. So before we do the, our, our catch up with Max's, I do like to make you rewatch the episode mm -hmm. and have you cringe. But also just because it kind of refresh your memory. <laughs> because again, yeah, like you said, it's it's been like 10, I have trouble 11 remembering months. remembering last week's episode. Right. Same with, you know. Because that Asia Minor joke for me, it's like, oh, it's like two months ago. It was not two months it was ago. A year ago. About almost, a year ago. Almost yeah. So, um, <laughs> uh, I made you rewatch it, and you shout it at yourself, blink. God, yes. da God dang it. So I used to not blink. I was blinking, but like I would hit play and then record for a bit, and then hit stop, and then I would blink. Or, or I wouldn't hit play, and but like when I was editing. This cat is crazy. Um, and so the way that I would edit it, I would edit out all the blinks. Yeah. And so it was just like me creepily, creepily staring, staring at the, at the camera, camera for seven, seven minutes, minutes without the, blinking. The immortal, the immortal. man. Um, <laughs> he was stealing your soul as you were watching. Yeah. So now I like consciously blink. Okay, that's awkward too. It is a very awkward, <laughs> but you have to do it because when you're staring at a camera, you can go for a very long time without blinking. I don't know why that is. It's the same, so it's the same thing like when you're staring at a screen, you blink a lot less than if you're not staring at a screen, and it's the same when you're staring at a camera. You just blink a lot less. That's so funny. 
looks very unnatural. All right. All right. So moving along, what have we been up to in the last week? <laughs> so this week was very big in our household because I was on Rachel Ray. Rachel my, friggin' Ray. Rachel friggin' Ray. It was my first national TV, my national TV debut. Um, it was really, really cool. Yeah. We filmed in my friend Mo's yeah. kitchen, which is much nicer than Thank ours. you, Mo. Thank, Thank you, Maureen, for letting us use it your wonderful pristine... lighting. It was gorgeous. Yeah, no, it was lovely. And credit to Jose for helping behind the cameras. Credit to Jose for helping behind the cameras. Yeah, so um, you were on Rachel at Home, so if you... Yeah. Yeah. You, you can look her up online. <laughs> if you're in Put LA... Put a link in the description. <laughs> I'll look for the link, but if you were in LA, shoot Fox 11 and... Yeah. The whole thing, and you made Globy. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, made the Globy, which I made back in December for the show. Um, it's just getting it to a wider audience. Yeah, no, that was awesome. And, and we did get some people commenting, hey, I saw you on Rachel. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, so. And it was funny because they came in, so this week was the Irish Stew episode. And so, like, a lot of people's first episode was the Irish Stew episode. And I thought that was going to be, like, oh, God, they think this is the most depressing show ever because I'm talking about the potato famine. Yeah. But people loved it. Though there is a lot of fighting in the comments. There is so much fighting. <laughs> but let's not get into it right now. <laughs> but um, it's always surprising what episodes are going to do okay. Because sometimes we think, like, this is a holdover I have no episode. Idea. Like, yeah. we, we, I don't I want to call it a filler episode, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's not. I mean, I put a lot of work into every episode. Yeah. But some episodes I'm like, oh, this, people are going to be really interested in this. Yeah. And then some I'm like, nobody's going to be interested in Semla or Semlor, um, which is the Swedish one. And. That's one of the most popular it's, episodes I've done yet. It's doing gangbusters. Yeah. Which is, Makes so, no sense. hello to our friends from Sweden. Yes, <laughs> Swedish people. Amazing. We love it. Um, so, anything interesting come out of that Rachel Ray segment, even though we we didn't actually meet in person? But, you know, she gave you a shout out. She, she called did. You. She called me Eminem. Yeah, you know. And she's R&R. &R. Uh, Eminem, Max Miller, wow. Double R loves you and that recipe. A globe are beautiful and so simple. Here's my, here's my bad joke because Max had his bad Asia Meyer joke. It's you melt in my arms, not in my hand. See, it's sweet and lovely. Yeah, it's not really a joke though. I don't melt. <laughs> you do get very hot. You run hot. I do get very hot. <laughs> That's a lie. I totally melt. <laughs> Anything above like sixty eight degrees, I'm like I'm hot. <laughs> All right. Well, that's exciting. Uh, you know, and, and you did have some uh, live uh, airings, right? Besides yeah, I did Rachel? a lot of St. Patrick's Day things, local news around the country. So things are things are happening. All right. When's your show happening? Like, I don't know. You know, and let's not rush. It. I don't have time. We're doing fine. <laughs> okay. We gotta finish the book first. Yes. Don't talk. About oh, I'm sorry. I'm stressing you out. Here, drink. So much work. Drink, 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 drink. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. So let's go back to the 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 rape video. There were some user comments I want to touch upon. It's, so yes. um, this one comes from Thomas Sawinski. Hello, Thomas. When you mentioned that figs travel well, it made me think about what would be considered traveler's food back then. I'm surprised I haven't done an episode on that. I mean, I mean, honestly, it, it hasn't really changed. It's like cheese, dried food. Dried meats, salted meats. But I mean, I also imagine it must be different per culture and geography and all that. Like, Kind of, but no. Really? I mean, it's cheese, <laughs> dried meat, salted meat, and dried fruit. And that's, I mean, and then dry bread. Like bread that doesn't have a lot of stuff in it, buddy. I'm just thinking um, like hardtack, but I mean. Similar to hardtack, yeah. All right, next user comment. Different, I mean, obviously, different cultures are going to have, like, variations in that. Yeah. But, you know, in Asian cultures, it's going to be rice, dried rice, instead of dried bread. But Interesting. Yeah. All right, next comment comes from Melissa. I can't believe you left out the time when Jesus killed a fig tree just because it didn't have fruit on it. Why didn't you touch on it? I, I don't know. Because I was trying to keep the episode short. Today, I would have. I would totally. Uh, it's one of my favorite random stories in the bible where he curses the fig tree jesus hates figs yes it's so weird <laughs> yeah so, you're right i, I know that and i've read lots of stuff on like what it's supposed to mean and stuff but when you read it like no matter the translation it just comes across as a weird story and like totally out of place yeah that and even weirder is the story of the pigs when he killed all the pigs 
Oh, I haven't really read the Bible. Yeah. yeah, I know Noah's Ark, and that's about it. He takes demon spirits and puts them into pigs and drives them off a cliff. Anyway. <laughs> Is there a children's book version <laughs> with pictures I can have? That's the version that I read as a kid, and it had that story. That's oh, the one my grandma I need to find that. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah, it was. Okay, so next comment comes from Zuthal Zarnis. They say, says shaggy quarantine hair, quote unquote while still having his hair more organized than I probably ever have in my life. Yes. I, it was shaggy for me, because I keep my hair, especially, you know, I was coming out for, like, working at Disney. My hair was always immaculate. Pristine. I got it cut all the time. You do and get your hair cut a lot. I don't now. It's more often than I do. I just got it done. <laughs> but, um... I, 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 I've been cutting my own hair with, like, rusty scissors upstairs in the bathroom. I know. Uh, I, 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 think the, I think the last time I cut my hair was like a year ago plus. Probably like uh, a year and like four months at least. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty sad. But I wear a hat mostly anyway. So, um, But it was shaggy for me. Yeah, it was shaggy for you. And you also had like the beginnings of a beard. Because um, yeah. now you have a beard and yeah. people have opinions on your beard. And yeah. we have it's opinions. It's going to stick around for a little while. But once we get married, it's gone. Actually, once I lose another 10 pounds, it's yeah, gone. Yeah, I wish I could grow a beard to hide my second chin. Oh, well. Anyway, moving along. <laughs> um, I want to discuss uh, Marvel. Like, Marvel movies, specifically. Just because oh. I've been very ingrained. I've this been... is his life. <laughs> this is about me now. This is my show, and now yes. it's my time. Yes. Um, Let's catch up with Jose. <laughs> this is a Jose portion. I'm working a lot. Sorry, people. This is when you when you can sign off. And no, no. <laughs> I will not Stick take offense. Around. I'll see the dip in numbers, and you'll be like, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> it's so my division. It's my moment. Up. Yeah. So WandaVision, We just finished WandaVision, uh airing. Great fun finale, and we just started Falcon this week for the first yes, episode. Falcon and Winter Soldier. The Falcon and Winter Soldier. So oh, um, kind of weird. Just dark. We'll see how it goes. It's going to do just great, Max. I'm sure. You know what? I was not sold on WandaVision the first couple episodes. Seriously? I, I enjoyed them, but I was like, what is going on? Uh, see, well, And you're... then I was like, oh, okay. I see, totally get the it. difference, because I read the comics. Right. So. I had no idea what was happening. Like, for me, it's like, I have my Marvel Unlimited app on my iPad, so I'm like, I, I love Spider-Man, and like, uh, yeah, the know. most recent was uh, Jason Aaron's Thor. Like, they introduced, like, Lady Thor, and... The only time I've ever read a comic in my life it was a Civil War comic oh, book. Oh, God. Can you it call was, that a comic? It was the story of Antietam. At that point, just call it a graphic novel and move on. Brilliant. No one wants to read that. It was great. Oh, you know what? That's not true. I also read um, a comic book version of Jane Austen's Persuasion. Oh, Jesus. You're such a nerd. <laughs> Going back to Thor. <laughs> Again, I'm the, nerd. the Jose portion. Jason Aaron did amazing Thor for the last few years. He introduced Lady Thor. Gore the god butcher thor love and thunder which is the next oh, Thor yeah, movie yeah. okay jason uh christian bell christian bell is going to be gore the god butcher so it's exciting spoiler alert no no it was announced oh, it's wow. out there right. okay. <laughs> i'm excited it's christian bell yeah, yeah, yeah he can do no wrong i mean maybe he can but yeah <laughs> we'll find out hopefully not unless you're working with him <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> he yells at people all the time does right? he maybe it was just once but still you yell it's on sometimes. YouTube. I never yell. You you talk loud. I do talk loud. To me, that's yelling. Okay. Don't talk loud, at me, Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, what was your first Marvel movie that you worked at at Disney? Oh, when I was at Disney, the first one I worked on was Winter Soldier, Captain America: Winter Soldier. And that was actually the first one we saw together in theaters. Yes. The first Marvel Cause, movie. Well, because I started working for Disney right after we met. That's right. Okay, so that makes sense. Because our first movie together was actually Lego. Lego, Lego movie. movie. So good. Our first movie was supposed to be Frozen. Frozen. One, the first Frozen. Because on our first day, I was like, I've never seen Frozen. You're like, what? I've, you've never it had just come out, by the way. Except it like hadn't. A few months earlier. Apparently been months, but, you know, right, enough time. Months. Yeah, I guess it had been like I'm sure. Months. No, it was in theaters for a while because it was doing so well. <clears throat> um but even so, it had been out for months. And at yeah. that point when we tried to see it, it was... It was no longer at any theaters in Santa Monica where we were. <laughs> That's what we found out. Yes. So, so we saw the Which was still fun. And then went to Denny's. I love Denny's. It was a good time. Okay. It was our second date. Yeah. That was our second date. But anyway, so our first Marvel movie together was Captain America the Winter Soldier. Now I want Denny's. We're not going to have Denny's. Mm. Sorry. But... 
my first Marvel movie at Disney was uh, Doctor Strange. Mm. Yeah, and I like that one. one to work on. When I rewatched it, I was like, I really enjoyed it. Like, I forgot how much I actually enjoyed it, especially like now with Wandavision. Like, yeah, for the it's, next one, I, I appreciate it more now. Like looking back, yeah, yeah. I think though my favorite Marvel movie to work on was. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. Because, and I still remember the day that it came out, we had no idea how well that movie was going to do. Mm. And I just remember seeing, because we would get the numbers updated every hour, like how much money it was making. Not that I was working on a commission or anything, (laughs) but it was still exciting to be part of it. Yeah, of course. Um, You put time into it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, it started at, like, 5 a.m. Numbers started coming in and, like, just racking up. We were just... It was a really exciting day at the studio. Yeah. That and the first the first Disney Star Wars movie, Force Awakens. Those are the two most exciting. Well, I mean Star movies. Wars. And Black Panther. Well, for Star Wars it was coming back after like so many years right. of not being. Right. So it's the third. But even thing. so, it was, it was like the, the feeling around the studio was just so yeah. exciting. I think the first time that I got that really big big feeling was um for Black Panther. Yeah, Black just Panther the, was really crazy. The energy is so contagious. Yeah. And uh, my former boss, who retired, hi Anthony, we love you. Um, she, she, that's one of her favorite ones. So she said at Disney yeah. at this point, and I, I'm so honored to just really have been around to feel that energy. Yeah, that yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah, not sad that Chadwick is. Yeah, well, that's not to keep it happy, keep, keep it, it light, happy, keep it light. Come on, Maxwell, keep it bright, <laughs> keep it bright, keep it gay. From the producers, anyone? <laughs> the musical version of the. I've never seen that. Yes, he has. No, I haven't. He saw. I have it. no idea what you're talking about. Anyway, maybe one day you'll take me. But um, WandaVision, you actually enjoyed it, so mm-hmm. I, I I think it's or rewatchable. It. What's interesting is like people were like, "What is going on? What is like every episode?" It was so weird. <laughs> I mean, I love the homage to the Dick Van Dyke show and Mary Mary Tyler Moore and um, all those old shows, but it still didn't make any sense until like what the fourth episode, I think. Well, that's when the curtains were pulled back. Yeah. I thought it was charming. <clears throat> plus, it was the, super charming. Plus, the music's fun, you know. Music, ah, oh, yes. The Lopez's. Good job, Lopez's. Yeah, I, it was, they did Frozen also. Um, really good job. And Agatha all along. Just Agatha all along. The memes. So good. So good. So good. Uh, Catherine Hahn, though, like, Catherine I've seen Hahn's her, like, fantastic. she just needs to be in everything. Yes. <laughs> Can she be the, the next Meryl Streep and just, no? They're different. I would say a different, different style of performer, wow. but she should still be in a lot of things. She's wonderful. Okay, well, um, that'll wrap up my Marvel segment. I feel like there's so much more to say. I, I gotta bring it back at some point. That's a different show. No, this is my show. True. This is what I want to talk about. All right, fair enough. I'm gonna force it down. <laughs> it's like how I forced history down people's throats. Yeah, like I'm just gonna force my Pokemon and all my Marvel <laughs> nerdiness, and if you like it. Yeah. Great. And if you don't, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> well, anyway, let us move along and talk about our plush guest. So, our plush guest is Bulbasaur or Bulbator. <laughs> it's Bulbasaur. He's number one, literally, in the Pokedex. And he's number one in my heart because he's my favorite Pokemon. Yes. And the first one I chose back when I was nine years old, playing on my little Game Boy Pocket, the blue one. You probably had the big, clunky gray with a green screen yeah right? it wasn't even in color when i had it well i wasn't in color I when i tetris and balloon kid balloon kid it was a scary game because like he went into a cave and he had to have these balloons and if they got popped games were actually really hard back then i gotta say i get i want to imagine that he was probably already in the cave when you started playing but i'm not i, I you know no it, because you would have to like lower you'd have to get rid of balloons to lower down to get into the cave and then you'd have to get more balloons to go up oh so hard that sounds stressful it was really stressful. yeah well this is why you can't play overcooked no i can't play you were traumatized <laughs> turn-based only please thank so you boring. they're not boring they're fun too but anyway oh. so bulbasaur he's my favorite he's number one yes. and i think again the pokemon group is kind of not really there but kind of there and i think in my head he's one of the first pokemon right i mean i think at this point it's like the third or fourth one but in my head his bulb is like bulb is like a fig even though it might not be the right color Maybe I've yeah, never we weren't seen... really trying to like, tie. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Have you never seen a fig? <laughs> They're bulbous, aren't they? Yes. I guess. Yeah. All right, See, sure. That's you, a stretch. That's a stretch. You make me look dumb. I feel dumb. No, I'm dumb, but it's like... 
Because we weren't doing anything on purpose then. It was just, it just like happenstance. Yeah. Just, just like this channel, just yeah. blowing up. Just, just like this channel. Well, not my Stumbled channel. Stumbled into it. <laughs> well, no. no. like Tasting History. Stumbled well, into it. We got to clarify that Tasting History was set up right before quarantine happened. Yes. So <clears throat> if, because I remember you came home one day, because we had talked about it, that you want to do this channel. And I was like, you know, like, just okay, but just kind of temper your expectations that YouTubers do this for years. Yes. And, and I, yes. like, and we already I talked about it. Yes. yes. I only bring it up again because you brought it up and like to throw it in my face. I do. So, so I got to clear the air. I do enjoy doing I got to clear the air because I, this is my, I do that. You don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one day you came home with all these like lights and camera. And I was like, this isn't cheap equipment. No, like it was not. Like if, if you had done that after, no. I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. If you had been furloughed, you would not have done that. I wouldn't have If you had not just history. a few weeks prior had bought this expensive equipment that you were yep. going to film with. So it started at the perfect time. If yeah. it had been one month later, it wouldn't have. I wouldn't have started it. Yes, yes. Because I was freaked out about money. And thankfully, you did. Because thankfully, we did. We are. You are at six hundred thousand subscribers plus. Six hundred and twenty-one, I think. I don't remember. I don't. Boom. Know. Yes. And As before we sign off, Maxwell, what's your favorite Pokemon? Uh, gosh, it varies. But Blessed Waz is one of my favorites. Who? Well, I don't have them anymore. <laughs> Blastoise, Blastoise, um, and I really love Snorlax. Yeah, I just feel Snorlax is a mood. Kindred, it's a mood. Spirit. It's a mood. Like I yeah, see you. I just want to lay there you. and eat and not move and sleep. and kind of be in people's way <laughs> for no reason. Because because then I'm like, all right, I just want to sit here and lay down and eat, but I still want you to pay attention to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to do anything for it, though. <laughs> Attention for all the that wrong reasons. Oh, God, buddy. All right. Well, I love your shirt that I got you, so of course you. I love it. Yes. Yeah. This is the face you make at me. I do make this face You make this face at me all the time. I'm a grump. Like, you're annoying, Jose. Like, shut up. I would never say that. I would never <laughs> say any of that. But the face you make says that. <laughs> well, anyway, friends. This is probably the face I just made. <laughs> Screenshot it and send it to me, please. But anyway, friends, thank you so much for catching us at season two i'm calling it the first official even the last one was the ketchup taste test i want to do an oreo taste test although I, like all right get me some oreos i'll well, eat oreos well your diet allow that like just to have that many oreos all right we'll figure it out i'll i'll, I'll booze you the up it doesn't allow this you so. when you oh the diet starts tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> monday 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 all right <laughs> well thank you friends appreciate you all see Cheers. you next time